evil, but sometimes the state must go to war. And we believe that this debate should be about whether or not if things happen in this war, these soldiers have an insurance that they have a way to prove their innocence. Ladies and gentlemen, the gravity of this debate is not whether we want to conduct just war, but it's about whether or not these soldiers have an insurance to prove themselves right because they're following orders. Because we believe when they're following orders, these soldiers can actually prove that at the very first place, their conduct is actually not based on their own intentions, but it's the, the order from high above. Thus, we believe as an individual, this should not be put on blame. Because as soldiers, they're, they're just like any other individual. They deserve justice. Unlike the negative side of the house, we believe that these soldiers have the right to defend themselves using the argument of following order. Now, let's see the case of the negative side of the house. Well, first of all, to clarify, we never really brought the idea that we're going to specifically to talk about the war on terror until we decided to have another debate on the war on terror, which we believe is just not right. Now, they're talking about how they want to achieve world peace by putting these people, uh, uh, putting these soldiers to actually, they're going to discharge these soldiers because they believe that that's the way to actually minimize the, the, minimize the victims. Well, ladies and gentlemen, A, it's not really the notions of the, notions of the, it's not actually the gravity of these motions because we believe these motions should be about whether or not these soldiers can have a way to prove themselves guilty, but not about how to achieve the world peace or just war. And second, even if it is actually the notions of this debate, they never really explain to you how by punishing these food soldiers, you can actually change the order from high above. Because both sides of the house already can see that the reason why we have these because there's this blurriness of order coming from high above. So we believe here that the end goal cannot be met even through their proposals. Now, let's see the cases. Let's see several notions come up in this debate. First, do they really have the right to defend themselves as the soldiers? Uh, second, does the chain of command can be used as a justified argument uh, to make themselves, to prove themselves innocent? And third, which will bring a betterment for the war efforts? Now, ladies and gentlemen, they're saying that at the very first place, these soldiers do not have the right to defend themselves because at the very first place, they know the principles of just war, so when they violate it, that they're, they're, they're just proven to be guilty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they take it simply. They, they disregard our point in which we picture as you the special, special piece of the situations in war, in which your life is in line, it is the opposite being killed or get killed, ladies and gentlemen, and then the pressure is there. So the, the concept of just war, especially when you have probably the wrong order, sometimes put you in a situation where you have to do this, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, we believe that even if they know the, the concept of just war, these people still have, must still have the ability to defend themselves that they're innocent because they're following order, because, ladies and gentlemen. Because at the very first place, as the proven side of the house, we believe, we already proved to you that as an, as an individual, these people have the right to defend themselves to achieve justice. And the way to defend themselves to achieve <laughs> justice can be done by showing that at the very first place, the intention, the actions that they're doing in wartime is actually not coming from their intentions. Because you punish people, uh, the principles of justice, you punish people if those people are actually doing the wrong thing based on their intentions. And it can be proven otherwise when these soldiers can say that I'm following order. This ability is, we believe, is the right of the soldiers to have to prove that they're actually innocent. And the second, does the chain of command can be used to justify the defense? Well, they simply say practical stuff, it's hard, it's, uh, there's a lot of memos to search through. We're saying they do not negate the point that this is a justified means to defend yourself. They're only saying that it's going to be hard to defend yourself using this, but not saying that it is not a justified way to defend yourself. So basically, we believe they agree to our point, which is one of the contentions, the major contentions in this debate. Well, we, as a the primitive side of the house believe that it's actually a justified defense because there's a huge possibility for these soldiers to prove themselves innocent by showing that they're only following orders uh, in the in the war time. And the third contention, which will bring the betterment for the war effort. They're saying we, we hate wars, we don't want war. When they neglect the fact in reality, sometimes you have to do war. And sometimes these wars, you cannot uh, you cannot negate that there's going to be a civil victim. That is why you're saying minimizing and not making zero with a civil civil victim, ladies and gentlemen. So we're saying that here, their their point of recklessness that will happen will not actually serve the goal. To
to make the work fast, to make the work effective, while our side of the house is saying to you that when you follow this strategy, when you actually can make sure that these people adhere to their commander, it will make the war the war more effective and faster. That way you can actually serve a better just war. So ladies and gentlemen, we prove to you that these soldiers have the right as an individual to defend themselves using the order.